Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at the solutions for questions one and two of the January 2023 Mathematics Paper 2. We're just going to jump straight into it. And question one, A1, it says, by rounding each number in the expression below to one significant figure, estimate the value of. So this question does not need an exact answer. We're looking for an estimate. And remember, when you're rounding to significant figures, you start from the first non-zero digit. So in this expression here, the root of 108 divided by 19.72 plus 5.296, we follow the rules of rounding off when we are doing significant figures just the same. So well, one significant figure is this one right here. The next digit is less than five. So we're simply going to round that off to 100. And in our denominator, 19.72, over one significant figure is this one again. The 9 is 5 or more, so we add 1 to this, so that is going to give us 20. And um, 5.296, this is our one significant figure. The next number is less than 5, so we drop that part and we write 5. So this becomes the root of 100 divided by 25 and the root of 100 we know is 10 so this is 10 over 25 of course we can simplify this by dividing both numerator and denominator by 5 and here we do that and we get 2 over 5 so that's our estimate remember it says an estimate and not an exact value so the next part of it here says we have to divide 3 and 3 eighths by 5 twelves plus a third. So let's write that down. 3 and 3 eighths divided by, in bracket, 5 twelves plus a third. Now we can rename this one third so that it has a denominator of 12 by multiplying um, this by this denominator by 4. 4 times 3 would give us 12. And 4 times 1 there gives us 4. So once we rename it, we end up with um, 3 and 3 eighths divided by 5 twelves plus 4 twelves. And here, from the bracket, 5 plus 4 is 9. That's 9 twelves. And we can simplify this. Um, dividing by 3, we get 3 quarters, three fourths. Now, what we have here is three and three eighths. Let's just write that as a improper fraction. So three eighths, 24 plus three, that's 27 over eight divided by three quarters, which leads us to keep, change, flip, 27 over eight times four over three, so we can do some division here. 3 divides that 9 times. 4 divides that 2 times. And so we end up with 9 times 1. That's 9 over 2. And since we want our answer as a mixed number in the simplest form, we have to divide it out and write 4 remainder 1. So that's our answer right there. And in the first instance, this was our answer. Let's mark them. And moving on to the next part, here we have, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of available seats in a hall was reduced from 125 to 93. Calculate the percentage decrease in the number of available seats. So first we want to decide how many seats were lost. So we subtract here, 125 minus 93, that gives us 32 seats. And so, because we want to write that number as a percentage, this 125 is our base number. That's what we're moving from. So it's 32 over 125. Of course, since it's percent, we need to multiply by 100%. Doing some division here. 25 there gives us 5. 25 here gives us 4. And so we have 4 times 32 here. 4 is 8. 4 is 12, that's 128 over 5. And dividing that out 
we end up with five into that 25.6 percent all right you can verify that choose your calculator to check it this next question is definitely going to need your calculator it says mika invests a certain amount of money in a bank that pays compound interest at a rate of 2.5 percent per annum per year at the end of the two years, the value of our investment is $7,564.50. So we are to find the amount of money that Mika invests. And that means we're trying to find this letter here, this P, which is for principal. Remember, the R is for interest rate and the N for the number of years or the number of compounding periods as this formula goes. So let's fill in the information that we know. We know, we do not know P. But we do know that the interest rate is 2.5%. So let's write that over 100. And we know the number of years is two years. We also know that when we calculate this, the total amount, that, it, that the total value of the investment, the A, is 7,564 dollars and 50 cents. That's what it is. So let's tidy up this section here. Type in this in your calculator, 1 plus 2.5 divided by 100. That gives you P times 1.025. And square equal to 7,564.50. Now, the, 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 there's a little temptation here when we multiply this out. If, if you should go ahead and use your calculator to square this, which you should do, um, having three decimals here, we're going to end up with six decimal places in the number. And you might be tempted to roll it off. And I'm advising that you do not roll it off. Use Just use the number in your calculator to do it directly, because if you th these numbers here are sensitive to rolling off and they may create an error in your answer. So use the exact number. I suspect that's why they give only two years. So P then is going to be equal to 7,564.5 divided by 1.025 square. And once you type that into your device, you should end up with, as your principal, 7,000. Two hundred dollars. Like I said, if you, if you attempt to multiply this out first, one point zero two five squared, you should get one point zero five zero six two five, which is a ugly decimal, six decimal places, and you might be tempted to round it off um, because it's too many to write. Once you trouble that, you're going to mess with the answer. So just use it as is, and you'll get your seven thousand two hundred there. Moving on. Question two, which is our algebra question. We are asked to do some indices work. Here we have x to the third square, which simply means x to the third times x to the third. And using our addition rule, when you multiply in similar bases, you add the powers, three plus three is six. Um, so you could use the other rule, which says the Power rule, when you're raising a power to another power, you simply multiply the powers. So x to the 3 raised to the 2 simply becomes x to the 3 times 2, which is x to the 6. Remember, this result was from saying 3 plus 3. Same idea. Now here in part 2, we are dividing two um, terms, y to the 8 divided by y to the negative 5. The rule says when you're dividing similar bases, you subtract the powers. So let's subtract the powers. y to the 8 divided by y to the negative 5 means y to the 8 minus negative 5, which turns out to be y to the 8 plus 5, which of course is y to the 13th power. And that's that. Continuing. Here we have to factorize. Remember, when we're factorizing, we mean that we are taking a sum or a difference and rewriting it in product form. So here we have a situation where we can use our highest common factor. In this case, it is y. And so we write our y, we open a bracket, and we divide. 
xy by y. That leaves us with an x there. Put our minus sign. y squared divided by y simply means y times y divided by y. That cancels out or divides out and leaves us with y there. That's our result. We have factored it, factorized it. Here, this is the difference of two squares. So we're simply going to open two brackets and write easily x minus y, x plus y, and we're done there. Now, hence, simplify this expression. And the hence there means that whatever you've done before is sufficient to, to do what you have to do here. So notice that this expression is the same there, and the denominator is that exact expression there. So we simply write our results as y into x minus y and of course that is divided by x plus y into x minus y and these two are exactly the same they divide each other out and so we have as our answer y into y divided by rather x plus y that's our result Next, we have this situation here at C. It says the diagram below shows two rectangles, M and N, with their dimensions expressed in terms of X. So we have a length and a width, length and a width. And it says, given that the difference between the areas of the two rectangles is 64 centimeters, show that this X squared minus 2X minus 35 is equal to zero. So this question requires us to find the areas of these two rectangles subtract them and somehow at the end we should end up with this so let's do that x minus 3 times 3x plus 4 is the area for m so x minus 3 times 3x plus 4 gives us 3x squared plus 4x minus 9x minus 12 which simplifies down to 3x squared minus 5x minus 12. In this one here, it's x plus 2, x minus 3. So we simply multiply those two, x plus 2, x minus 3, which gives us again x times x is x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. And that simplifies down to x squared minus x minus six. So it says the difference between these two is, is um, 64. So let's write that down. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 12 subtract x squared minus x minus six is equal to 64. The difference between them is 64. So let's do that. So we, here we have 3x squared minus that x squared minus 5x minus a negative x, which means we're going to add that one, and minus 12 minus a negative 6, which is plus 6. And then we can just bring the 64 over to this side since we want our expression to end with a 0. So it's minus 64 equals zero. Let's tidy this up now. 3x squared minus x squared here gives us a 2x, 2x squared minus 5x plus x gives us a minus 4x. Um, and um, 12 minus 12 plus 6 gives us a minus 6 and a minus 6 and a minus 64 gives us a minus 70. So this is what we end up with when we tidy these things up. 3x squared minus x squared, that's a 2. A minus 5x plus this x gives us a minus 4x. And our minus 12 plus 6 and minus 64 gives us this. But notice this is not that. Um, this is x squared minus 2x minus 35. But you may notice here that these numbers are simply half of these. So we can take this expression and divide it by 2. And in divide it by, dividing it by 2, we notice that 2x squared divided by 2 gives us an x squared. Minus 4x divided by 2 gives us a minus 2x. 
and minus 70 divided by 2 gives us a minus 35. So we have shown that if the difference between their areas is 64, then this expression actually represents that. And that takes us to the end of our question. Thank you for watching. You can find past papers and other interesting materials at csigmathtutor.com. Continue to practice hard and best wishes for your exams.